start with some uh, water wastewater type problems, then we'll do some hydraulics problems, and then I'll follow up with some surveying problems. And if we have any time, I got some others we can do. Okay? So, uh, first one we want to look at is number 13 in the afternoon. So, it should have been in last week's handout. Number 13. System to biodegrade benzene, which is chemical formula C6H6. C6H6. <laughs> C6H6. Uh, the biodegradation follows the chemical reaction below. Note that you must balance this equation. The benzene concentration is 500 milligrams per liter. They give you the carbon is 12, hydrogen is 1, and oxygen is 16. So here's our equation C6. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me this morning. H6 plus O2 will produce carbon dioxide and water. So we're doing a, all we're doing is an oxidation here of benzene, <clears throat> like a combustion. Okay, now, they point out that it's not balanced. So we're gonna have to balance this thing. Okay, we've got six carbons on this side, we're gonna need six carbons on that side, okay? Uh, <clears throat> we have six waters on this side, we need six waters on that side, okay? And now we just balance the oxygens. Well, oxygens are easy. We got six times two is 12, plus three is 15. So we need 15 halves on the oxygen because we got two molecules, uh, or two atoms in the molecule, okay? Uh, so this, this would be 7.5. <clears throat> okay, so there's the, there's the balanced reaction. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, the molecular weight of benzene, which is 6 times 12 plus 6, or 72 plus 6, or 78. <clears throat> and uh, what the thing's looking for is how much oxygen do we need, okay? So we've got 7.5 times uh, 32, okay? 16 plus 16. Oxygen is 16, there's two of them, 32, we got seven and a half uh, moles. All right, now that comes out to be 240. So now we just set up a uh, ratio. We say that uh, 500 milligrams per liter is to 78 as X is to 240. Okay, it takes 240 grams of oxygen to oxidize 78 grams of benzene. So how many grams of oxygen, or how many milligrams of oxygen does it take to oxidize 500 milligrams per liter of benzene? Okay, so when we solve for X, we get 15.38 milligrams per liter. When we compare that to our answers, it looks like D is the correct answer, and D was 1,600. So that's the closest, you know, it says, the amount of oxygen in milligrams per liter to be consumed to completely biodegrade the benzene is most nearly. All right, well the most nearly we, we are to that is 1600. All right, now, this is the correct way, right? How about the incorrect way? All right, one way is if we don't bother to balance the reaction. Okay, if we just take what was given, C6H6 plus oxygen yields carbon dioxide and water, okay? Molecular weight of this one was 78, right? Molecular weight of this one's 32, so we're gonna say 500 is to 78, as X is to 32. When we solve this one, we get an X of 205 milligrams per liter, which is answer A. Okay, so there's one way to come up with one of the wrong answers. I didn't find how to get the other two. All right, you can, I, know, I can see, right off I can see how you can get C, okay? 
not work that into it, we'd probably give you C. I'm just guessing I didn't calculate it out. But they'll come up with weights like that. We talked about that last week, uh, how you can get some of these wrong answers. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> My whole family's got a cold and looks like I'm coming down with it too. Okay, uh, number 14, right below this one, says uh, three wastewater flows combined in a sewer, each having flows of BOD concentrations as follows. Okay, so they give you three sources, three flows in liters per day, and a BOD concentration of kilograms per liter. It says if infiltration having zero BOD is 10% of the flow, the resulting BOD uh, of the combined, it doesn't say this, but of the combined sewage is most nearly. Okay, so basically what we have to do here is we have to figure out our total flows. So our flow is uh, going to be 4 times 10 to the 6th plus 0.8 times 10 to the 6th plus 0.2 times 10 to the 6th. And so that comes out to be, what, 5 times 10 to the 6th liters per day. All right, infiltration. Infiltration is where water leaks into the sewers from the groundwater, typically. That's as, compo as compared to inflow. Inflow is where you have illicit water, if you will, <laughs> uh, getting into the system through illegal connections like downspout connections and things like that. Okay? So you can't prevent this, although we try to minimize it. It's 10% of the total. So it's 0.5 times 10 to 6 liters per day. So our total flow is going to be 5.5 times 10 to 6 liters per day. <clears throat> okay? Now, the BOD in the mixture is going to be the sum of QI times BODI divided by the sum of QI. All we're doing is a weighted average here. So, whatever the BOD of this is, we're going to multiply by that flow. Okay? So what we're going to get here is Q1 BOD1 plus Q2 BOD2, etc., all over our total flood. So to set this up, the BOD of our mixture is going to be, I'm going to leave out the 10 to the 6 if that's okay for you guys. Uh, we've got 4 times 200 plus 0.8 times 300 plus 0.2 times 500. And just to make it technically correct, I'm going to put 0.5 times zero. <clears throat> That's the infiltration right there. It doesn't have any BOD in it. It's just groundwater. Okay? And we're going to divide this by 5.5. I can put the 10 to the 6th up here, put the 10 to the 6th down here, and then it's technically correct. So anyway, when I put all this together, I get a BOD of the mixture of 207 milligrams per liter. And that corresponds dead on with answer B. Okay. What would happen, what would happen if we take all of this and divide it just by five? What answer would we get? All right, so if I take 207, 207, multiply by 5.5, divide by 5, let me write this down. If we leave out the infiltration, we get 228 milligrams per liter. What answer is that? That C? Okay, so there's one of your answers. One of your wrong answers is just you don't put, you, not putting it up here doesn't hurt you up here, but not putting it down here does. Okay, it adds to the flood. So what it does is it dilutes the BFD. So there's a possible wrong answer. 
Okay, next one is 15 and 16. 15 and 16 has a municipal activated sludge wastewater treatment plant. It's got primary clarification, anaerobic digestion. It's got the following influence characteristics. Flows 5 MGD, BOD 5 200. Suspended solids 220. Okay, we got a normally operated facility. Uh, waste sludge flow rate 0.1 MGD. Mixed liquor suspended solids 2500. Return sludge concentration 6000. Waste activated sludge concentration 6000. Aeration basin hydraulic retention time 10 hours. Primary purifier overflow rate 900. GPD per square foot. And effluent BOD 5 is 10. All right, a lot of that stuff's going to be extraneous. It's, it's information that you'd like to have for the operation of an activated sludge treatment plant. And uh, some of you folks in the advanced class have been watching these kind of numbers over the last few weeks. Okay, <laughs> anyway, number 15, problem number 15 says, if the plant BOD 5 removal efficiency is 95%, and the primary clarifier removes 35% of the influent BOD, the amount of BOD5 removed in pounds per day in the biological reaction is most nearly. Okay? So the total plant efficiency is 95%. Okay? The primary clarifier efficiency removal is 35%. Okay? So the first thing we want to do here, since they want the answer in pounds per day, is we're going to calculate what we call in uh, water wastewater is W and it's Q times BOD and if BOD if it, if BOD is in motor aspirator and Q is in MGDs we're going to have to multiply by our magical conversion factor 8.34 okay so Q is 5 MGD BOD is 200 motor per liter when we multiply these together we get 80 340 pounds per day. Okay? We remove 0.35 in the uh, primary clarifier in PC. So that leaves 0.65, right? So 8340 times 0.65 gives us 51. 50 going to the activated sludge basin. Okay? So we remove the difference between the two in the primary clarifier, and we got this going to the activated sludge basin. I got 54.21. What's that? 54.21. You got 54.21? Okay, I see what I did was I skipped a step. Okay. <laughs> Let me get my calculator out here. 0. 0.65 times 8340 is 5421. Save this 5150. We're going to use it in a minute. <laughs> okay, so it's 54. 21, that's what goes to the activated sludge basin. Okay, what leaves the plant? How much leaves the plant? Leaving the plant is 0 0.1. Is it 95 percent? 95 percent. 0.05 times 8340. 85% total removal, right? So 5% is going to leave. So if I take 8340, multiply by 5%, I get 417 pounds per day leaves the plant. Okay? So if 5421 goes to the activated sludge basin and 417 leaves the plant, what are we taking out in the activated sludge basin? 5150 pounds per day. Removal in biological treatment, I just call it activated sludge. 
is the 5421 minus the 417, which comes out to be, should be the 5504. Is it 504? Look at it right there and see it. Yep. 5,000. 
but you got a mismatch in your units. So that's how you get answer D. Not that you ought to ever do anything like that. All right, so uh, th those are the the uh, strictly water wastewater questions. Uh, in the morning session, they've got some questions that are either chemistry related or uh, water wastewater related. Okay, uh, one of these is uh, number seventeen on the morning. Now we've already worked, I believe, uh, 18. We did that last week. Okay. So what they say here is that uh, they want to neutralize. We want to neutralize four grams of NaOH dissolved in one liter of water requires one liter of what normal HCl solution. Okay, so this this problem, if you remember from water wastewater, is a BANA equals BBNB type of a problem. Okay, you guys remember this, we used an awful lot in my uh, either last fall or fall a year ago, depending on which class you read. Okay? So what we need to do is, here's our acid, and we've got one liter, right? So there's the volume of our acid, and we've got one liter of base, okay? So we need to know what happens if we take four grams of sodium hydroxide <coughs> and dissolve it in one liter of water. So all we need to do here is, cap since it's a one-to-one, -one, okay? We need to calculate the normality of the base, and that will tell us the normality of the acid. Okay? So normality equals the number of gram equivalent, not molecular, but equivalent weights per liter, right? So for sodium hydroxide, we're lucky there. It's molecular weight and its equivalent weight are the same because it's got a plus one. Uh, valence here, okay? So this is 23, this is 16, this is 1, so what's that, 40? 23, 39, 40. So the equivalent weight and the molecular weight of sodium hydroxide is 40 grams per equivalent, right? But we have 4. So what's our normality of the base? 0.1 normal, right? 40 grams would be one normal, four grams would be a tenth of that, 0.1 normal, okay? So since it's a one liter and one liter, that means we've got to have the normality of the acid also has to be 0.1 normal. And that answer is C. But we use our VANA equals VBNB relationship from water wastewater. Okay, number 16. Just back one problem. It's a similar type of a problem. Okay, it says uh, we've got this, uh, we got 60 milliliters of NaOH. It neutralizes 40 milliliters of 0.5 molar H2SO4. Okay? And we want to find the molarity of the NaOH solution. 
That's what we're looking for. Now this one's a little tricky. Maybe still use VA NA equals VBNV. We can still use this equation, all right? We've got uh, 60 milliliters of NaOH. We've got 40 milliliters of acid. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward. But we don't have the normality of the acid, do we? We got the molarity of the acid. Okay. So, so what is the normality of the acid? Okay. Now, if it was, if it was a, uh, if the valence was one, then we just use 0.5. But the valence of H2SO4 isn't one. All right. Remember the molecular weight of H2SO4 is 98. The equivalent weight is 49. Okay? So if I have 98 grams of H2SO4 in a liter of solution, its molarity is what? If I have 98 grams per liter, the molarity is what? One. Right? Because there's one mole of acid per liter of solution. What would its normality be? Two, because the equivalent weight is 49, so how many gram equivalents do we have in 98? Two. So the normality would be two. So normality equals molarity times valence. Okay? So if it's 0.5 molar, what's its normality? One. Okay? So the normality is 0.5 times 2 or 1. So now we plug that into the equation. So we get the normality then is going to be 4 sixths times 1. So whatever that comes out to be. 0.67. Two thirds, or 0 0.6666, etc. <laughs> so 0 0.67 is the normality of the base. But, uh, 0.67 normal, and that is answer B. Okay. So what would happen if you not plugged in the two? You'd have gotten answer D. Okay, let me write that in. If you had used 0.5 for NA, you would have gotten, that's a name, that's a word, gotten uh, 0.33 for NB, which is answer D, I believe. Is that right? Answer D. So there's one way to get a wrong answer. Got 0 0.67 normal. If we have the NaOH has one valence, that's all. That's the same as 0.7 molarity. Yeah, good, good point. Okay, that's the normality. But because NaOH has a plus one, its normality equals its molarity. Good point. It's because we're looking for an answer in moles per liter, not equivalents per liter. So it's we, the answer we got was 0.67 normality. Equivalence per liter, but that's also equal to its molarity. Okay, because what's the what's the valence for sodium hydroxide? One. So normality and molarity equals good point. Okay, but if you just plug the 0.5 in, you've got 0.33, which would have been one. Okay. Okay, on uh, number 15, I don't know why I went backwards here. I know why, why I went backwards, so that when I got all the way over here, I should say I could use the 15. <laughs> so I don't need this. Okay, problem number 15 gives you an equation AS2 
O3 plus 3C gives you 3CO plus 2AS. And it says, uh, according to the equation above, the reaction of one standard gram mole of AS2O3 with carbon will result in the formation of, okay? And they give you choices, uh, one gram mole of AS, 28 grams of CO, 150 grams of AS, and D, a greater amount by weight of CO than of AS, okay? Whew. All right, so we're doing one standard gram mole of AS2. So we're just, we're just following this, this reaction, okay? And so it's, it's saying, what do we want to produce? We're going to have three moles of CO and two moles of AS. And they told us that arsenic is 75. Of course, oxygen is 16, carbon is 12. So together, that's 28. Three times 28, 84. Is that right? And this is 150, OK? So the, the com combination of one mole of ASO3, AS2O3, with three, three moles of carbon will produce 84 grams of CO and 150 grams of AS, arsenic, okay? So, what's the best answer? C, okay? C is the best answer here. And it's just a stoichiometry problem. But we did those kind of things in water, wastewater, but it's chemistry too, so, you know, you've had it twice, hopefully you'll, you'll be able to work that way. All right, now, where, where can some of these wrong answers come in? I don't really know how you get one gram mole of AS because it says two right here. Right, that, that first answer would be really hard to, to put down. The second one is, here's a number that shows up in your calculations, but then you're going to multiply it by three, right, to get to 84. So that might stick in your head and you write down 28, 28 grams of CO. Now, I'm not sure how they get. The only thing I can think on the on D is they're thinking, okay, you got three COs and you got two ASs, and so three is bigger than two. And you know, when you're when you're pressed for time and you didn't like chemistry, <laughs> and so you're guessing at some, hey, it might it might fit. All right, so now let's go to, in the afternoon session, problem number five. Slope. 
0.5 over 100, right? 0.5 over 100, or 0.005 is our slope. Okay? So here's what the, uh, the question says. The flow velocity in this sewer is most nearly. So we want V. Okay? And V is 1.486 over N, uh, R to the two-thirds, S to the one-half with R being the hydraulic radius, which is the cross-sectional area flow divided by the weighted perimeter. The cross-sectional area flow for a circle is pi R squared. In this case, it's going to be one-half pi R squared, right? And the weighted perimeter is this distance right here, okay, which is one-half times pi d or 2 pi r, right? What's the, what's the whole circumference of a circle? 2 pi r. So the halves drop out. So the hydraulic radius for a half circle and a full circle are the same. Okay? And so this comes out to be the pi's cancel, one of the r's cancel, so we end up, we end up with r over 2 or d over 4 is our hydraulic radius. Okay? If we use d over 4, then this comes out to be 0.25 because D is 1. All right? Slope is 0.005. N is 0.013. We plug those numbers in, and we get a V of, check my numbers here, do, 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 3.2 feet per second. Correct answer then is C, 3.2 feet per second. Okay? Now, I've got two alternate solutions up here, okay? So I'll take the C one down and stick it back in my book. All right? Okay? We can get answer B. So this is the correct way to work it. We can get answer B. By using V is equal to 1 over N, R of the two-thirds, S to the one-half. And this gives you a V, uh, still plugging in 0.25 for R, 0.005 for S, but putting 1 instead of 1.486. Then you get an answer of 2.16 feet per second. Okay, which is answer B. Or the closest one is answer B. Okay? What's this equation? That's metric. And this may very well be the one that's in the supplied reference manual. I'm not sure. 1.486, so they give you both up. It puts you K over N and then two values for K. Oh, okay. Okay, so they give you K for metric. Okay, so if you, instead of picking 1.486, if you pick one, okay? That'll give you answer B, all right? Now you can also get answer D, and what you're doing there is, okay, you can get answer D, by putting in 0.5 for your slope. You put in the grade instead of the slope. And that answer comes out to be, uh, I'm looking here, 32 feet per second, which is answer D, 32.4. And you know, where they stick this, the flow velocity feet per second in this sewer is most nearly, then it's telling you you don't have to be dead on, you can be close. And so, if you got 32 and the answer is 32.4, the next closest answer is 3.2, which one are you going to pick? You know, D, 32.4. Okay? So there's two possible wrong answers with common mistakes that are made. Can we assume that, like, 32 feet per second is really fast, so it's probably not going to be <coughs> some sanitary sewer. Is that a reasonable thing? That is reasonable. Sanity check? That is reasonable. 
At 32 foot, is fast. You know, 88 feet per second, 60 miles an hour. So 32 is about 20 miles an hour. That's that's cruising. Anybody ever gone 20 miles an hour in a boat? That's cruising. Okay, it's a good point, Nathan. Is that that's kind of one of those throwaway answers? Whoa, that's way too big. Okay. All right. So let me see. So we got we got uh, that's five. We got. And on here. Okay. There's number five. Let's flip over to, I think I got number six is next. <coughs> now, on the number six, I worked it two different ways and got the same answer. Okay? So then I'll illustrate this by showing you sometimes there's more than one way to come up with that answer. Problem number six says two tanks are connected two tanks are connected by a 500 foot length of one inch ID PVC pipe. So we got two tanks And they're connected by 500 feet of one inch uh, inside diameter PVC pipe. The appropriate value for the Hazen Williams coefficient C is 150. So this is Hazen Williams. Okay, water at 60 degrees. Uh, Fahrenheit is flowing through the pipe at a velocity of 10 feet per second, so our velocity is 10 feet per second. Tanks are open to the atmosphere. Entrance, exit, minor losses are negligible, so we don't have to worry about those. The difference in water surface elevation, so we're going to find... <laughs> Let me move my, my thing. <coughs> the difference delta H here in the elevation of the two reservoirs is most nearly. Okay? So, the Hazen Williams formula is V is equal to 1.318 times C times R to the 0.63. <coughs> S to the point 0.54. You'll notice it's very similar to Manning's. Manning's has 1.486 over N instead of this 1.318C. It's got R to the two thirds, 0.67 instead of 0.63. S to the one half, 0.5 instead of 0.54. So they're very, very similar equations. Okay? The R and the S are the same <coughs> thing as we had in manage. R is hydraulic radius, A over P, and uh, S is the slope. All right? So we were given that the velocity is 10 feet per second. 1.318 is a constant. C is 150. All right? We're assuming, we're assuming it's flowing full. Assume flowing full. There's no reason for it not to flow full. Okay, the way this is set up, two tanks and a pipe connecting the two tanks. All right, so what that means is that R is D over 4. Okay? I, I just found it over there. Okay, D over 4. And so we're going to have 1 12th divided by 4 to the point 63 S to the point 54. <coughs> Okay, so here's, here's a place where you could make some mistakes. You could just put one inch and divide it by four instead of one twelfth. Okay, so we're going to solve this for S. S comes out to be 0 0.365. Okay? And this is the friction, this is the friction, what we call the friction slope. Now because, because we rule out all possible losses,
losses, except for frictional loss, then it's also going to translate into the slope of the pipe itself. Okay? So, <clears throat> basically, what we're going to do here is we're going to say that Y over 100 is equal to 0.364. Okay? For every 100 foot we go, what do we have to drop to match that slope? Okay? So that comes out to be uh, <coughs> what, 36.4? And that's per, that's feet per 100 feet. Is that one of your answers? No, it's not, okay? But that's per 100 feet. So how do we get the drop? How do we get delta H? Delta H equals 5Y, because there's 500 foot. So it's 5 times 36.4. So delta H, I would, I would put that answer in there. If I didn't make it the test. Okay. So when you multiply 5 by 36.4, you get 182. 182 feet is, is the motivating force behind flow here. And the only thing we have is the drop in the elevator. Okay? So it's 182 feet. And that's one of our exact answers. 182. So that's C. Okay? Now you can also work this problem. You can also work it with Darcy Weisbach. I said, how did he teach you guys fluids did it? Okay. I like Darcy Weisbach. I don't take care for Hazen Wood. Okay, Darcy Weisbach says that the head loss is equal to FLV squared over 2GD. Okay? Uh, L is 500, G is 32.2, D is 1 12th, V is 10. Okay? So all we need is F. Now the supplied reference has a uh, Moody diagram, doesn't it? Okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the Reynolds number. The Reynolds number is VD over new, okay? V is 10, D is 1 12th, and new at 60 degrees for water is uh, 1.2 times 10 to the minus 5, if I remember correctly. Okay, when I calculate this out, I get 69,444 for Reynolds number. Five five four. Anybody recognize the five five four number? One eight hundred. Somebody wanted to sell me something. Okay. So if you go into the Moody diagram, hey, I'll be redraw that. <laughs> Okay? If you go into the Moody diagram, you have Reynolds number here, and you got friction factor up here. Okay? Now, PVC. You consider that a rough pipe or a smooth pipe? I consider it smooth. I would consider PVC to be smooth, which means we use the smooth pipeline. So somebody look in Reynolds number at 69,444, come up, go over, and read an F value. See if anybody, see anybody got an open to that? Yeah. What'd you get? Uh, I'm still looking, what's my 
the, what did you get, one and two? One and two each? Yeah. Huh? What I got was point oh one nine five. Y'all buy that? Okay, so we take this and put it in right here. We solve for the head loss and we get uh, 182. Which is uh, the same answer that we got with Darcy Weisbach. I mean, not with uh, Asian Williams. So here's actually two ways to work it correctly. And that's not coincidence. Hmm? No, no, it really, it shouldn't be a coincidence. The, the, the formulas are real similar. Okay? So there's that one. Okay, uh, number seven is another fluids hydraulics type problem. So this waste activated sludge can be described as a Newtonian fluid with kinematic viscosity of 20 times 10 to the minus 5. So nu is 20 times 10 to the minus 5 square feet per second. At the same temperature of the kinematic viscosity of water, this is of uh, activated sludge, <coughs> water is simply 10 to the minus 5 square feet per second. Okay? Over here I used uh, 1.2, which is I think pretty close to where it is at 60 degrees. Uh, the relative roughness of the piping system is 0.001. So the relative roughness is 0 0.001. This is epsilon or K over D. This is what goes on your Moody diagram. There's a another y-axis. This is your relative roughness. That's where you go into the uh, curve over there. Okay, it says the pressure drop for flow of water at Reynolds number of 10 to the 7. So Reynolds number is 10 to the 7. And this piping system was determined to be 1 PSI. So the delta P is 1 PSI, pressure drop. If waste activated, this is for water. If waste activated sludge flows at the same velocity through the piping system, the pressure drop is most nearly. Okay? <clears throat> so if water flows, <coughs> so we want to find the delta P for uh, activated sludge. Okay? So here's the way I work that. We use, uh, I'm going to use Darcy Weisbach, FLV squared over 2GD. Okay, pressure drop is uh, gamma times the head loss. So if we want to convert head loss in feet to pressure drop, we've got to multiply by gamma. Okay? Our relative roughness is 0.001, and our Reynolds number is 10 to the 7. So we want to look up on our Moody diagram what our F is. F comes out to be approximately 0.02. All right? Now we're going to be on a different line. Okay? So this is uh, between 10 to the 5th. This is between, between 10 to the 4th and 10 to the 5th. Right? 10 to the 4th to 10 to the 5th. So we're over here at 10 to 7. Okay? Now what happens with your roughness is after a while the lines become horizontal. So we want to find a 0.001 relative roughness line. We want to follow it until it hits the 10 to the 7 line. Then we want to come across to where it hits F. Okay, so this is a rough pipe as opposed to a smooth pipe. Okay? Would it say didn't want to calculate F or run the furniture on time to just assume 0.02 because 
I remember I looked in the, in the class a lot of the time. A lot of times in 2018? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I assume new is 1.2 times 10 to the fifth lot. But I don't know that I just assume f is equal to 0.2, but both of these problems is right at 0.2. Okay. Uh, okay, so when I go into the Moody diagram, I get 0.02. Okay? So, uh, so basically, we know that Reynolds' number is VD over nu, right? And uh, uh, what we can do is we don't know, the, the problem doesn't give us V and D, all right? But they're constant, okay? Pipe stays the same, velocity stays the same. I mean, the problem says that. So let's just call that C, okay? Just for an arbitrary constant, okay? So, uh, so Reynolds' number is C over V. C then would be Reynolds' number times nu, okay? We were given the Reynolds number was 10 to the seventh, we were given nu for, for water was 10 to the minus 5, so C comes out to be 100. Okay? So now we want to do a new Reynolds number. For, this is for water. So now we want to do a new Reynolds number for activated sludge. It's C over nu, so I take 100 and I divide it by 20 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay? That comes out to be 5 times 10 to the fifth. Okay? Go back to Moody, and you find that F is about 0.02 again. <laughs> okay? And what that means is delta P stays the same. We don't get we don't get any any uh, change, and so what that means is there's your answer. And I think that comes out to be a <coughs> okay. <coughs> Number eight as a sanitary sewer delivering flow from a sump to a lift station is shown in the figure below. Sewer length 400 feet, diameter 30 inches, sewers made of concrete. And managed roughness is constant. For full pipe flow with water surface elevations in the upstream sewer sump and lift station wet well 105 and 103.5 feet, respectively, the discharge is most nearly. So we're looking for Q, and we're going to be using Manny's equation, 1.486 over N A R to two thirds S to the one half. Notice that Manning's equation is generally stated in terms of V, but if we want Q, we've got to multiply it by A area. Okay? So there's a there's an equation we're going to use. Okay, the head loss is 105 minus 103.5. Okay, or 1.5 feet. The slope is 1.5 divided by 400 or 0.00375. Okay? Basically what's, what you're looking at here is that you've got your uh, from the sump down to the lift station the water surface elevations are 105 and 103.5. So that represents the head loss. Okay? If we're assuming constant diameter, which we are, and we're, and we're assuming uniform and steady flow, which we are, then the drop in the water cell surface elevation is the head loss. Okay? We're not looking at the inverts. What we're looking at is the, the head loss drop. Okay? So again, we're calculating a friction slope here as opposed to the slope of the pipe itself. Okay? But that's what we're going to plug in up here for our slope. Okay? It's flowing full. It's a pipe flowing full, so our, our R is D over 4 again. And they said it was what kind? What diameter? 30 inches. So this is 
30 over 12. Don't forget to put those in. If you just stick in 30, you'll probably get one of the wrong answers. Okay? Area, it's flowing full, so it's pi over 4 times 30 over 12 squared. Okay? N is 0.013. So we run those numbers and we get a Q of 25.1 CFS, which most nearly corresponds with answer B. Matter of fact, it hits answer B dead on. Okay? Now, look at the, here's a, here's a trick. <laughs> look at the sump invert elevation. Okay, so let me put trick here. Not trick. <coughs> Plausible distractor. He did. Okay? The sump invert elevation is 101. The lift station invert elevation is 100. If you use that as your delta H, you get a Q of... Twenty point five CFS. Now that wrong answer is not there, okay? But that is a mistake you could get, and it's it's uh, it's still the closest answer. Which I don't understand why they would put that. You know that is a mistake you can make. One over four hundred. Maybe they don't think that's a worthwhile mistake. So even if you make that mistake, you still get the right answer if you choose the closest. But that could be a that could be a uh, one of these plausible distractors. So I'll put a question mark there. But it didn't match up with any of the wrong answers. All right. Okay. What? Oh, we got eight minutes. I don't see the problem with eight minutes. Okay. I've done the hydraulics ones. I've done the water wastewater ones. Uh, let's see. I can do surveying or fluid. Fluids. We, we have a survey session. We got a survey session. Okay. So let me let me do a few fluids problems. Probably. <laughs> I care 47, 48, 49 in the morning. Do y'all not have that one? In either one? Check the one I just gave you. Is it there? You got it? Okay, 47 gives you forty-seven gives you a, a gauge with a frictionless hinge and a force pulling this way and a fluid. And the fluid has a density of uh, 1,600 kilograms per meter cubed. And this thing's three meters tall. Okay? So, uh, and the gate itself, the gate is three meters by one meter. And it's uh, a rectangular homogeneous gate? It's rectangular. Who cares whether it's homogeneous or not? <laughs> okay, rectangular homogeneous gates, three meters high, one meter wide, friction hinge at the bottom. If the fluid on the left side of the gate has density of 1,600 kilograms per cubic meter, the magnitude of the force required to keep the gate closed is most nearly. Okay, so what we're going to do here, since the fluid is all the way to the top of the gate, we'll just have a triangular pressure distribution, right? Okay, and the force is what? Let's call it FH. One half gamma B H squared. Did I remember that right? One half gamma B H squared. Got me down here, so might as well just look at it. <laughs> okay, and gamma is rho G. All right. So my horizontal force is going to be one half sixteen hundred times nine point eight one. Because it's in the metric system. The, the B is the width into the plane of the board, so it's one meter. 
the height is three meters squared. So I'm going to get a horizontal force going this way, that's FH, going that way of 70,632, 632 newtons. That's my FH. Okay? And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to equate moments about the hinge. So I'm going to sum moments about the hinge. So I'm going to have uh, one meter times 70,632 newtons times, or is equal to three meters times F. Okay? This, this one meter here is this distance right here, which is H over three, right? This distance is two-thirds H, where H is, H is three. So to sum the moments about the hinge, it's one meter times this 7632. And then to get this moment, which is the closing moment, it's three times that F. And so basically F is going to be one third of 7632. So F comes out to be uh, 23,000. Looks like I got 544. And to convert that to kilonewtons, it's 23.5 kilonewtons. And that's answer C, 24. Okay? Yeah, and again, if I, was, if I was making this test, I'd have 70.6 as one of my answers. Okay? Yeah, anybody else? Then you have the two forces equal to each other, as opposed to the two moments being equal. Y'all are over there, and I'll have a reputation of being meaner than the people who make this test up. Okay, number 48 is just a question and answer. Question, question and answer, you don't have to do any calculations. It says, which of the following statements is true of viscosity? It's the ratio of inertial to viscous forces. Okay? Anybody know what that definition is? It's not the correct one. You know what that definition is? Isn't that Reynolds number? Is that Reynolds number? Okay. Uh, B, it always has a large effect on the value of the friction factor. No, because with Mooney's diagram, if you're over here, okay, uh, well, now, if you're in lambda flow, uh, it's just, you know, it doesn't. Okay, so uh, let's write down Newton's law of viscosity. So this is problem number 48. Newton's law of viscosity. is shear stress is equal to mu times du dy, where this is the velocity gradient. Mu is the coefficient of dynamic viscosity, tau is shear stress. Okay? So, if I solve for the coefficient of dynamic viscosity, it's shear stress divided by velocity gradient, and look at answer C. It's the ratio of the shear stress to the rate of shear deformation, which is what du dy is. It's how the water is deforming, being caused by the shear stress. So the correct answer there is C. Sometimes I'll throw questions like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Throw questions like that in there. Okay, and uh, uh -oh. let me work one more. Number 49. horizontal jet of water, density 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter deflected perpendicularly to the original jet stream by a plate as shown below. The magnitude <coughs> of the force F required to hold the plate in place is most nearly. Okay? So this is a momentum problem. Sum of forces equal to rho Q times V2 minus V1. Okay? We've got a jet velocity of 30 meters per second. We've got a jet area 
of uh, 0.01 meter squared. <clears throat> okay? So we only have, since it's open to the atmosphere, the only pressure, we don't have any pressures. Okay, so there's no pressures, no pressure forces. <coughs> the only force we have is the force on this plate. <clears throat> That's the only force we have. So the water comes in and deflects this way. So we have a velocity in the x direction equal to 30. <clears throat> After it hits, there is no velocity in the x direction, right? We got a velocity in the y up and a velocity in the y down, they cancel. So we'll only have a force in the f direction. So we're going to say minus f <coughs> is equal to rho, which is given as a thousand <coughs> kilograms per cubic meter. Flow rate is 30 meters per second times area, 0.01 meters squared. So this is VA for Q. And then our velocity is zero minus 30 meters per second, because it's V2 minus V1. So this is the X velocity coming in. It's positive, but we've got a minus sign. And then it's zero going out, okay? So if we put all these together, we should get an F equal to 9,000 newtons or nine kilonewtons. Oh, excuse me. Wait a minute. Yeah, nine kilometers. <coughs> Got confused there for a minute. Okay, so the correct answer here would be B. Okay, how do you get A? A is half of, of B. I'm not sure what you do to get that. I don't see a logical place to throw in a to throw in a two. Okay. Half the velocity? Well yeah, any place you can put in a half and it would give you that answer. Maybe it's split into two and you got that two figured in there. Okay, hopefully this helps.